Deborah is an incredible person in the Bible that we get introduced to. And so we see this leader of a nation and the Bible says that she's a prophetess. The Bible says that she's a wife. The Bible says that she even declares of herself, I, Deborah, a mother of Israel. And she basically brings victory to God's people through courage, through leaning on the Lord. She's an example to me. I look up to her and I go, wow, if God did it through her, he can do it through me. He can do it through my daughter. He can do it through women all over the world. She did the thing that was right in front of her. She did the assignment that she was called to. And in that extreme obedience, she changed the world. She changed the course of history. But it's not one woman running the show and one minister. It's going to be a lot of women coming together in unity and saying, we have a place in the kingdom of God. And we don't have a place in the kingdom of God apart from the men. We have a place in the kingdom of God, united with the men of God, the children, the teens, the old, the young, everybody. And we're all on the battlefield together. Well, as the leader of my household and being a leader of the core men, you know, first thing we have to do is we have to keep our family covered in prayer. You know, every morning I get up and I, I pray a hedge of protection around my family. You know, it's important that we're covering our family first and foremost because the enemy's never gonna stop attacking us. If we keep our house protected, you know, that will flow into other areas of our, of our life. Raise them up, Father, be warriors in Jesus' name. Riba bo samra natakare, riki shiv la bo sataya. The agenda of Satan is so strong and powerful out there right now. We need mighty warriors to be raised up right now that can say enough is enough and raise their children up the way they should go. God, we pray for peace that surpasses all understanding. That we are covering our wife with a hedge of protection, that we're covering our wife in prayer. That's how God designed it, for the men to be the head and to love your wife like Christ loved the church. It's so important that we're, that we're doing that in our family. Did you want to have avocado on yours? Yeah, give me about half of one. Okay. In the story of Deborah, it talks about what life was like in the village and in the city. The village life had ceased because the enemy had come in and had ravaged the city. So there was no really people walking around and markets open and street life and family life like they were used to. Bella, get out of here. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for this food. I pray. You pray. Yep. Deborah tells the story that life ceased until I, Deborah, a mother in Israel, arose. A who in Israel? An apostle? A prophet? A minister? A mother. She says a mother arose. It's giving us this picture of family is so vitally important to the kingdom of God and for revival and for change. It's important not only to me, but I think it should be important to every family to keep their family together. I think it's important to spend quality time. Even though you have a ministry, you still have to make time for your family at home because this is your first ministry, is your family. We don't want life to cease. We don't want depression to come into our family. We don't want it to be where ministry is all we do and laughter has ceased and family time has ceased. That is not what God has intended for ministers or anybody, any believer. Got one right now. Got one. Got one. Oh, I got a big one for you. Uh, did you get that on video? Man, this makes you feel like you got something. <laughs> this is a part of revival. I don't have CBN News in my house right now filming revival because they would not film revival in my home because it's not going to look like what revival 
looks like to the church. But in this home, we're experiencing revival because something that was dead is now alive. Our marriage that was dead is now alive. My relationship with my daughter, that ministry was getting in the way of us connecting. That's now becoming alive. I've had to adjust and say, I cannot go and minister at your church. I have to minister at my church. You go, where's your church? Right, I'm talking about my daughter, my house, my home. That's what God has called us to minister in. And we can see revival in our homes. I can see revival in my own personal life. So we're looking at Deborah's all around the world and they're changing the world by, because they're changing what's happening in the living room. I think home is right. Praying as a family looks like not only coming together and seeking the one who created us, but also getting closer to him in a relationship. That's one of the key components in, in a marriage is to pray together. And, and also with your children. You know, you want to be the, the hedge of protection or the covering over them. You want to train them up to pray. So praying together is key. It is an honor and it is a privilege that God has allowed myself and other wives to be submitted. We actually get something really special where we get to have several covering and umbrellas over us. The head of the household, my husband's covering me. Jesus Christ, the head of the church, covering my husband. Your breath fills my lungs, honey, I need you, you're the only one. I When I say Deborah's Arise, it's unique because I'm talking about a merging of women who are walking in their calling, but also men who are walking in their calling. And the story of Deborah's Arising is a merging of the two together. She arose to actually join forces with Barak, who was the commander of the army. The man of God in his sphere of influence, who was doing what God called him to do, called on Deborah and said, Deborah, we're not going into battle unless you come with us. So when we say rise of the Deborahs, this is a call to every single person in the kingdom of God. This is what the Lord is doing right now. And people need to get on board. Won't give up. Take everything we have and let the new begin. This gathering is going to send a ripple effect through the kingdom of God. If you can change one family, one marriage, one child, one teenager, you can change the world. I was praying and praying and praying and I already knew in the back of my head, this is going to be a major merging of men and women this time. So I'm thinking of all of that and I'm praying and I'm praying and I'm hearing rise of the Debras. When and I saw Barack, Deborah, I saw the men on the battlefield and I saw Deborah getting up from those palm trees and getting herself out on that battlefield. And that's when the victory was won. This retreat marks one year of the revival that broke out last year in April. There was about 300 people at the last retreat. The crazy thing is there was probably only about 900 total members in the core group at the time. Now there's over 12,000 total men, women, and children. When we meet for core group gatherings and we book out the hotel and the venue, it becomes a 100% core group takeover. So for this Rise of the Debras, just get ready because it's going to be crazy. And I don't know if the hotel is ready for us. I'm nervous. <laughs> I am.
I'm just ready for whatever. You know, I'm, I'm just like, ladies, have the communion ready just in case. Let's just all be ready. And here's the plan, but let's all just be flexible with the plan. Let's be flexible if the Lord says, I want everybody to lay on your face for 30 minutes with no music before we even sing. Are we ready and flexible to do that? Or are we going to say, well, what about the live stream? We don't have time to be doing those same things we've been doing in the church world thus far. We have got to be led by the Holy Spirit. God stamps the core group gatherings with his presence. It is his sign of approval. I am with them. We're all coming together, so we're, we're going to be stirred. We're going to be imparted into. And then from here is the sending out. After the rise of the Debras, I want women to feel I was broken, but now I'm whole. I needed healing and I got healed, set free, and delivered. I came in to you know, experience worship, but I left radically transformed by the power of God. Men coming in and saying, my heart was hardened, but now my heart is a heart of flesh. I'm open to my Lord and Savior. I want to change. I want to be a better husband. I want to be a better father. I want to be a better mother. I want to be a better son, whoever, whatever it is. I want people to leave and go, from this day forward, Never the same. Never the same. Meet us here. Meet us here. Meet us here. Power 
children and teens passed down from the mother's side of the family I break every generational curse by the power of Jesus Christ anything passed down from the father's side of the family that is not of God I break it now now every demon that was holding on to the curses out in the name of Jesus. Every demon of pornographic lust, we come against you right now in Jesus' mighty name. You will come up and out. Every demon of fornication come out right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I speak clarity over their mind. I speak purity over their heart. Every demon of masturbation in the name of Jesus, we rebuke you. You will come up and out in the name of Jesus. Out, out, out. There you go. Let them go, men. Don't compromise. You've been messing with this thing long enough. Tell it to come out. Take authority over it right now. Every demon of fornication up and out. Every demon of pornography. We rebuke you in the mighty name of Jesus. Out. Out. My vision out. is to see every man set free, sanctified, and delivered of devils. You know, there's a lot of men that are they're dealing with certain situations in their life. They're dealing with pornography or they're dealing with lust. They're dealing with so many different sins. But, you know, when they see someone else, hey, this guy's been through it. He's gotten through it. He's been delivered. They, they have hope. And Jesus is the hope. He can deliver them all. Why are all of these thousands of women coming into the core and calling the core their home? I believe it's because God is doing something so unique where women come in and they'll say to me, I've never experienced the power of God like this in all of my Christian walk. They'll say things like, I didn't know I needed deliverance. I was told I was crazy. I was told I needed to be on medication. I was told to just sit down and just figure it out. I didn't know until I got into the core group that, wow, this is a problem I need deliverance from. And then they get deliverance and we tell them each and every time, don't just get delivered so that you can sit good in the neighborhood. Now go help somebody else. The core group is all about raising up, equipping, getting people strong and sending. 
That's that's why it's an apostolic ministry. It's all about sending. So we literally have thousands of women and men now who we're sending out on the streets every single month. It's like, it's the book of Acts coming to life. Prophesying, like if I call her over you, then we would stand her up or just say, I see the Lord, da 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 Why? So that everybody can receive what is being said. And the God is going to be going to happen in your lunch rooms. Yeah. It's going to be happening in your rooms. <laughs> How many of you want the power of God to touch you right now? You do? I see his hand, and it's Jesus' hand. He's reaching out to every single one of you and saying, Will you accept my hand? The Lord is saying to, to, to me, when I grow up, I have to prophesy. Well, I think one of the beautiful things about CORE is this is a family connection. I think one of the great surprises that the Lord has brought to the CORE movement is the involvement of men. It didn't really start that way, but inevitably it was going to get there because men are hungry and once they see their, their wives start rising up and being everybody that God has called them to be, the men just naturally want to flow into that leadership position. Our families are our first ministry. And honestly, the woman is the heart of the home. The husband is the high priest and he's the leader. But as women, I believe that we have been silenced in the body of Christ for so long that the Lord is now saying, arise, arise and shine for your light has come. And what the core group is doing is taking the family and bringing them together because there is nothing more forceful and powerful for the kingdom than a godly family that's together. There's something that we can all learn from Deborah. Year after year, generation after generation can all learn and glean from Deborah's story. It's timeless. It will never get old. When the Lord began to reveal to me the story of Deborah and that it's not just a story from old days like, wow, wasn't that nice? But it's now. The Lord wants to do it in each and every woman. And so letting women know each and every aspect of Deborah's life, I wanted to teach it. Why would the Lord name her and give her that name? Because in the Bible, people didn't name people things just because it was cool and trending. They named it because it was given by the Lord. Deborah's name means be, and so just teaching on that, that the bee, you know, is working and the bee is got honey and sweet. It does not, it's not going around, you know, spreading chaos. It's going around to help things grow. It's going around to sow those seeds. And so we see Deborah like that, but we can also be like that. And so teaching the Deborah series, it was life changing for me. And I think it is, it's going to continue to go on and go on to our, our daughters and beyond because Deborah's story again is timeless it will it will never end we are not uh, one dimensional people we're multi-dimensional so when I think about Deborah she was somebody that carried different responsibilities different roles but she was able to navigate those also she was the only woman to fulfill that particular role which speaks to me of she's somebody that broke a ceiling and i yeah. think there's a lot of barrier breaking people that god is raising up in this hour yeah i agree and i feel that even when men look at the story of deborah they may not connect but i feel like right. the lord wants them to see the characteristics and the nature of what she was carrying she was carrying this anointing to be a judge. Men can carry that anointing to go and to judge and to rightly judge. And she was carrying anointing to lead. Men and women can share that. And so I think that what you're saying is that women can be pioneers. I want us to understand here before we do any prophetic activations, there's a difference between being a prophet and prophesying. Tell your neighbor, not everybody that prophesies is a prophet. We can hear from the Lord through our spiritual eyes. Ephesians, Paul is praying and he's praying for the church at Ephesus that the Lord would grant the spirit of wisdom and, and revelation and the deep intimate knowledge of him having the eyes of your heart flooded with light. Those aren't these eyes. Jesus said, I only do what I see my father doing. He was speaking of the visionary realm. A lot of times people will say, well, I'm not hearing from God because they think it's going to be in their ears. 
it's going to be a dream but maybe God gave you a picture now this is where you need to know the Bible because if God gives you an apple is there scripture well God said Israel was like the apple of his eye so if God gave me an apple I could say hey the Lord says you're the apple of his eye because I know what that means now that picture when we do activation in a little bit we get a picture that's the gateway to prophesy the picture is not always the full prophecy it's the doorway in Romans 8 27 it said he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the spirit is so we have a spiritual mind sometimes a prophetic leading can just be a God thought you just have a thought you're walking into the core conference and you just have a thought I feel like that lady might be discouraged and I should just give her a word of encouragement you didn't hear it you didn't see it you just had a thought but listen if you're saying to God God I want to be obedient now well, who do you think gave you that thought did the devil give you that thought to encourage somebody did the devil give you that thought to sow a seed did the devil give you that thought to be a blessing no so watch out for God thoughts we're going to do one word activations. Okay, one word activations. Like for example, maybe if you're really going through brokenness and I just came to you and said, God said redemption, that would speak to you. Maybe if you were believing God for resources and I just walked up to you and said, the Lord said to me finances, that would speak to you. So sometimes we feel intimidated like we have to have a lot of words, but you don't have to have a lot of words. God is opening a new door in your relationship with Jesus. Do you get what I'm saying? Like in the Father's house, there are many different He said that I'm hugging you right now. So in the heaven, I'm hugging your God. I just declare that. The woman in the back, who Julie will pray for, but as well as everyone in this room who's dealing with any type of breathing issues, where they're stressed, they can't breathe, Lord, that you're just clearing out all nasal passages, all breathing cavities, all lungs, Father God, in the name of Jesus, where they're literally going to breathe in, and it's not just going to be healing in their physical, it's going to be breathing in a new breath of life given to them by the Father in heaven, in Jesus' name. They're going to go back and pray for the lady in the back that was standing. So your guys' primary job is once the word is being revealed about a condition, you're going to be the one that releases the anointing. Yes, it's, it's really good. Woo! Yes. I had it for so long, but when I'm running, it was a little bit, it was hard to breathe sometimes. And I just, we started to pray. I could feel the, the post-nasal drainage already. And then my eyes, the pressure behind my eyes gone. But I can really breathe. Like, I can breathe. I, I mean, I can breathe. I pray right now in the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that you will hear in Jesus' name. Whatever is in there that try to keep you. I don't know if it's a deaf and dumb spirit, but I'm calling it out in Jesus' name. You must go in Jesus' name. And he's talking to the inner womb child who's been hurt by their parents, specifically the father. And because of that, the spirit of, of fear, of abandonment and rejection has followed you. It has came to your relationship, to relationship, to relationship. But right now, in the name of Jesus, I defy, activate, and impart the Father's love on you. I release the perfect love of Jesus on you. For it's the perfect love of Jesus that cast out all fear. Father, we release the anointing over this room in Jesus' name for deliverance and for healing. Holy Spirit, we thank you that you are moving right now. We command every demonic operation to be halted in Jesus' name. No longer will women sit in the back row and be silent. We have a job to do. We have an assignment to do. And when I see the Lord, I want the Lord to say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. God is going to say that to people who are arising and saying, despite the odds, despite persecution, despite what people think, I have to do what God's called me to do. And if God has called a woman of God to cast demons out, so be it. If he's called a woman of God to preach the gospel so people can get saved so they don't die and go to hell, so be it. I'll be the biggest cheerleader for the women right now. And I would pray that every pastor, every leader, every apostle, every prophet, every man of God would say, yes, we're on board with that.
And it takes a strong man to do that. I see that happening right now where the men of God will say, ladies, we don't want to continue ministry without you. We don't want to continue preaching without our preaching mamas right alongside us. We don't want to continue prophesying and leading evangelism groups and doing crusades without the women beside us. I just want to see the men walk out their calling in God of who God designed them to be and who God called them to be. You know, I believe there's so much more than just going to work every day and doing the nine to five. God has a plan for every man's life and I believe that we're going to see that in this core group. I believe that we're going to see men that are walking in their calling. They're going to be evangelists. They're going to be raised up to be just warriors for the kingdom. People to go out and pray with someone, lay hands on them and walk by and cast out devils. I believe that this is the time and for such a time as this, it's going to be pretty incredible to see what the Lord does. Somebody is going to really shout on this one tonight. I said the word of the Lord is your push back is about to be pushed back in the name of Jesus. But in the day of Deborah, the judge, she was the judge of God's people and the people of God and Deborah and all the people that were in that story, they fell under pushback of the enemy. How in the world was the enemy actually able to accomplish all of this in the life of God's people? How was he able to do it in Deborah's day? How was he able to subdue and oppress 
thousands and thousands of people that should have been standing together and pushing back. Do you want to know how we did it? The Bible says that in Judges 5, 7, it says that the Israelites would not fight back until ooh, until I Deborah arose see your teenager they might not be fighting that spirit of suicide back just yet until you mama arose <laughs> right in that living room until you dad arose uh-huh, this ain't about just women. See, the characteristics, I can look at David's life and I can go, I want to have a heart after God. I want to be a prophetic person like David. See, I can identify with that because I'm identifying with the characteristics that God placed in the individual. It ain't about gender. It's about the spirit of God within a person. And so she gets called into war on the battlefield and she calls for Barak. Lord says, go get Barak. And she did it. And she didn't try to just go into the army and say, well, God gave me the word. And so I'm going to be the one to tell the army what to do. Da, 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 da. No, there was order. She wasn't the one to tell the men of God. Barack was the one to tell the men of God because that was his role and his assignment. And they both work their assignments perfectly together. The men and the women of God can work perfectly together. See, Deborah was not competing with Barack, and Barack was not competing with Deborah, and Deborah wasn't trying to be the army's commander, and he was not trying to be the judge. Oh, Lord, have mercy. They were perfectly content seeking the counsel of God in their own roles, being on the battlefield together, and seeing the victory together. And they link arms, and they get on the battlefield. And sure enough, the word of the Lord comes to pass. He lures them down into the river, and all of a sudden, here comes the rain. The rain came in. The floods came up. The rain came in. And all of a sudden, those iron chariots they thought was going to win the battle and the victory, those things were actually a weapon against them. See, the enemy's weapons are about to turn on them and they get stuck and now the enemy can't move and sure enough they're delivered into the hands of the Israelites and the victory becomes theirs and there is peace in the city for 40 years they work together life was restored the pushback was pushed back hallelujah I feel that it's going to happen for so many of you in here today that will have faith and stand in God's word and say, enough is enough. Enough is enough. Every time I see some of y'all, it's like, oh, the enemy's just the enemy's just the enemy. Next time I see you, you're going to say, let me tell you what I did to the enemy last week. The devil thought he had me, but it backfired. The devil thought he had me, but I'm set on fire now. Because the devil can't have me or my family. This is an eviction notice to the enemy. What? The chain breakers in the room say. I said the devil can't have me or my family. This is an eviction notice to the enemy. Chain breakers in the room. The devil can't have me or core family. Hey, 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 hey. Say, say, the devil can't have me or my family. Fiction notice to the enemy. Oh, the chain breakers in the room. Yeah, yeah, then. I said, the devil can't have me or my family. This is an eviction notice to the enemy. Breakers in the room, and there's no telling what he's gonna do. Let the devil get on me for my family. This is an eviction notice to the enemy. The chain breakers in the room, and there's no telling what he's gonna do. Break, 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 break,
don't have women moving in ministry and when women are really pushed to that back place and told we can't speak we can preach we're not to do anything in church all we're to do is be quiet they'll let us sing a song they'll let us teach in the daycares they'll let us clean the church but that's the extent of it that's a problem biblically i don't see that in the name of jesus christ i release the anointing of the holy spirit on the children in jesus name receive the anointing receive the anointing Receive the anointing. Jesus, the victory belongs to Him. We need women to arise. We say, Deborah's arise. We're saying, every woman out there, you have a purpose and a calling in God. It doesn't matter if God called you to bake cakes for the neighborhood. It doesn't matter if God called you to preach to crusades across the nations. It doesn't matter if God called you to write books. Whatever it is, we need you. We can't do it without you. I believe the men will now take their place as the prayer warrior of the household, the intercessor of the household, the leader of the household, the guider of the household, the person that they've been trained up to be, and the person that God made them to be. Every single eye on Jesus Christ right now. Holy Spirit, we look to you. You're going to receive the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the Holy One of Israel, ah, Yeshua. Receive the anointing! I believe that after this retreat, the men and the women arise. The women rise as Deborahs. The men rise as Baraks, and they become leaders, not only of their household, but of their generation. I believe we're gonna see a change in the world. Receive the anointing! Receive the anointing! Receive the anointing! And so it's time to arise from that cave, from the grave, from where life has pushed you back. So where are we arising to? The exact calling that God has us to walk in. And so I feel that if women could catch this, we could change the world. You guys had pancakes with sugar, corn syrup, syrup, <laughs> and butter. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for this food. I prayed. You prayed? Yeah, of course. Can I pray over mine, though? Go ahead. <laughs> Mine didn't tangle. I know, but you're letting it go way back here. Let it go to the oh, very end. Oh, that's not the rod for us. <laughs> 